Hello, so this is going to be a sort of very quick and simple review of one of these Fermo decimeters. There's been some on eBay recently. I bought this quite a while ago, but I never got round to doing a review on it. The main reason was, was because unfortunately, and I'll definitely point this out in this review, um, these Fermo decimeters, without proprietary hardware, you can't change the dose unit on them, and you can't reset the total accumulated dose. Um, so for a lot of people, they'd be pretty impractical. All you can basically do on this unit yourself is adjust the alarm thresholds, um, you know, button combinations, and um, change, like, a kind of dose equivalence thing. So basically, as one I think is called H10 and the other is called H07. And essentially it's like a dose multiplier. So I think it's like H10 means essentially it does a 1-1 one, one dose. And I think H07 is like, you know, a 70% dose. So it's basically... I think designed so if you knew what you were working with in terms of radiation sources, you can more accurately set this to um, reflect the radiation. So, interestingly, I believe this is one of those sort of um, modern replacements for a Geiger counter based decimeter. So rather than using a Geiger Muller tube inside, it uses, I'm trying to remember what the proper um, electric term for it is, but you know, it's one of the things you get in circuits. I think it's a diode. It's the sort of type of diode these use. And basically, the pros of these seem to be that you can now make them cheaper, run at lower voltage, and do most of the jobs a Geiger counter would do. So this is beta and gamma sensitive, and obviously x-rays as well. Uh, you can actually see the technical specs on the back there, which is pretty handy. Um, so, as you can see, it says, long press on button, next menu will mute alarm, short, next display or lock on, double start or select. So, it shows you what photon energies it picks up. Uh, so pretty low to 10 MeV, um, so that's pretty high, and it shows you once you get to at least one microsiever um, to 16 uh, sieverts, which is an incredibly high range. I mean, I'd rather it would start at 0.2 microsieverts or something, which is more about background, but, you know, one microsievert means basically as soon as this detects any sort of abnormally high levels of radiation, it goes off. So what you've got here, you've got a beta window here, um, your diode type detectors laying across the bottom there. That's where it's beta sensitive on that little bit of film. Uh, that's your very, very loud alarm, and that's your button for, you know, changing the display. So as you can see there, we've got on here the 288 um, micro C that sits absorbed since I last put a battery in it. Or, no, sorry, not since I last put a battery in it. Full stop, because as soon as you use these, you can't reset them, as said. Um, and good luck getting the proprietary hardware for a decent price online. It's basically like it uses its own kind of docking station scanner thing, where you also need their own CD-ROM software. Um, so basically all you're really going to use on this is the current dose rate, which always shows one microsievert an hour because that's as low as it goes, and basically the other function. So what I'm going to do now is demonstrate um, the DP63's radium scale. Um, we're just going to put that flat on here and see if we can get the alarm to go off. But what you should see in a minute, let's just change that to uh, the active mode. Oops, I have knocked my phone over. But as you can see there, it says 48 microsieverts, so I'm 56. That will keep going up, but it will cut back to the other screen in a minute, which is a bit irritating. Um, yeah, it's really annoying. I, try, I didn't want to film this with just the camera on the tripod, just simply because of the fact that, you know, it's quite a simple video. So as you can see, that now reckons that's about 110 microsieverts an hour or so. Camera is being annoying and not wanting to focus on the little di digital display. 130 microsieverts an hour. 290 microsieverts. So this has a very, very loud alarm if you can set it off, but the alarm threshold that I've got it set to is pretty damn high. Because, um, as you know, this is a pretty scary radiation source. Obviously, I've got it in a plastic container, so none of it can flake off. But this gives off quite a lot of alpha, beta, and gamma. Obviously, this only picks up the beta and gamma. However, you can... I found that strontium-90 directly on the beta window tends to set it off. Um, the alarm. Uh, the DP2 source, obviously, is the easiest thing to set it off with because the DP2 source, within seconds of being next to it, you know, I, I assume it's because it's doing over one millisievert per hour. That's the range at which the, you know, meter starts freaking out. And yeah, the alarm on this is well over 100 decibels. It's actually really painful, but that's the point, because the idea is you'd be wearing one of these, you know, in a nuclear power plant or somewhere, and if the alarm goes off, it's telling you that there's a serious radiation hazard. 
and because it essentially goes up to 16 sieverts or 1600 absorbed bronkens, um, that is a <laughs> very, very high dose, you know, as in 20 minutes and you're dead kind of level of radiation. So these are good devices, don't get me wrong. It runs on a single AA battery. I found both rechargeables and um, alkalines work fine in there, so 1.2 to 1.5 volts. Um, but as said, the only problem with this is that without proprietary software, you can't reset it, it seems, because it was, you know, designed, I think, so workers couldn't, you know, reset their total dose, because I think it was, you know, one of those ones that's designed so workers are always logged and checked what they've been exposed to. So the idea is that, you know, only an admin type person can reset them, not the actual individual workers. But there you go. So these Thermo Fisher decimeters, they're very good in terms of build quality and actual decimeters. The only thing I don't like on the build quality of this is the battery cap. As you can see, it's a bit flaky. Um, really, they should have used a bit of metal for that, I think. Not the same plastic as the case, because every time you turn it with a screwdriver or a coin, a bit more flakes off. But everything else on the build quality is amazing on this. I said a huge radiation range. Um, this is definitely the highest decimeter I've got in terms of the fact it goes to 16 sieverts. Um, and I believe it would do that, because as I said, when I've tested it with my strongest sources, it doesn't, you know, stop reading at a certain number. That's one of the nice things with, like, diode-based, um, sort of, essentially, the modern equivalent of a Geiger counter. So, oh, and this is also well-shielded. I couldn't set this off using, um, the plasma ball or other sort of high electrical circuits near it. It seems to, you know, only pretty much respond to ionising radiation, which is good. Um... So yeah, pretty good. Um, battery life in it, I think when I put just a pretty generic brand AA, it wasn't a Duracell in, but it wasn't like a really cheapo battery. I think a new AA in there lasted about four months in it, with me now and again exposing it to radiation, so that's pretty good. Um, this does start beeping at you when the battery is getting low as well, uh, which gets a bit annoying, but at least means that, you know, you know to change the battery so it never isn't working sort of thing. Um, so overall, it's a pretty good unit, you know, as a decimeter. Um, but as said, the make or break thing for you on this might be that you can't change it from sieverts to rem, a Ronkin equivalent man, just simply because of the fact that something that has to be done using the admin software for this, and like the physical hardware, um, basically has a barcode system on there, um, where it uses, you know, like a barcode reader with software to change the settings on it, and you can't reset the total dose, so... If, if you had this in your pocket every day, it'd be quite good because it would tell you exactly how much radiation you'd have been exposed to, you know. Also, although it doesn't measure under one microsievert per hour, it does constantly keep going up every couple of hours. So it's more like it doesn't display it. I mean, I'm not sure if it just always goes up every hour by one microsievert. I'll need to check that. But, you know, like I say, background in this house tends to be about 0 0.2 microsievert, sometimes a bit less. Um, and this, you know, meter always, every few hours, I've noticed the number has gone up a bit. Um, but obviously, as I said, my strongest sources I've got, which, you know, all the ones you can legally have in the UK, as long as you keep them safely and, you know, don't randomly send them around in the postal service. Um, those can, it can certainly handle those, but, I mean, you'd expect it to, because this is, like, a proper one made by Fermo, uh, Fermo Fisher, you know, who makes some of the best, sort of, this kind of gear in the world. Um, but the main thing that impressed me is the fact that the beta doesn't overload it, in the sense that, you know, like I said, if you put a strong strontium-90 source, for example, against there, um, it will keep giving you pretty accurate readings, although it's probably done on a cesium or a cobalt dose equivalent, I imagine it's cesium-137. Um, whereas, like a lot of Geiger counters, for example, or other similar decimeters, can only necessarily register beta up to, you know, like maybe one millisievert or whatever, and then they'll just basically overload because of how many electrons are hitting the tube. But it seems on this that the diode in it is sensitive to beta energy that's significantly, you know, stronger. Obviously, I've got no way of really testing it against anything really scary, but as it's, you know, a good nuclear industry one, I assume it's basically, you know, designed that X-rays, gamma rays and beta rays of all sorts of the energy spectrum are going to register it up to, you know, like far, far beyond fatal doses. So, yeah. Overall, the video's gone on long enough. Um, I would say this is a very good little decimeter unit, but just bear in mind, without the very expensive software, you have no way of, um, you know, changing lots of the bit of it. Also, you can only have the buckle on that side. It's a very good strong buckle on this one. But yeah, bear in mind that if you wanted it facing the right way around, if you had it inside a pocket, you can't. It, like most of these, it always has to go that way around. Um, you know, annoyingly, you can't flick the... Um, sort of clip around the other way. Compared to the other little page of decimeters, 
I like to say this is probably my favourite one. As I said, the thing that annoys me is the fact you can't um, reset it without that proprietary software and the hardware sort of bits for it. But in terms of build quality and sort of use, uh, this is probably my favourite one. But the other little page of the scimitars for the nuclear industry that I've had, you know, been very good, especially if you can get them on eBay for under £100. Consider, you know, that the range on them and things like that and the convenience and size. Um, the advantage this one has over that other one I like is that this just takes a double A battery. The other one you have to buy very specific batteries for it, which aren't hard to find online, but they're quite expensive. Um, so well done for Fermo for, you know, using a universal type of battery for this. Because double A and triple A are like the most universal batteries you can get. As opposed to, you know, using some sort of weird watch battery that has to be a high voltage lithium equivalent. But there you go, it's a little decimeter, it does its job. If you had one of these, you'd be pretty, you know, have pretty good comfort, you know, comfort of mind, peace of mind sort of thing, knowing that if there was a radiation leak of any sort of significance, you would be alerted to it very quickly.